nachdem ich jetzt sleep. Okay, so day two, um, we're not going to pay too much attention to the map this time, we're just basically going to go for a bit of an explore. Um, yesterday turned into quite a mission when we, when we uh, followed that um, Forest Hill Road and um, ended up turning back and um, coming all the way back the way we came. Um, so we're going to explore some of these other tracks, some of these stupid tracks up here and just see how they go. Now Chucky and Rads had headed home as they had some work commitments to attend to and that just left Hilto and I to do some exploring. We started off by just hitting some of these harder tracks, just practicing some of our skills on some of the harder terrain. Now as you can see here I'll um, happily take my time uh, with any obstacle, just using those diff locks and crawler ratios in the Rubicon just to do what I can just to slowly and safely crawl up it without using any momentum. I'll generally try taking all the different line options I possibly can and I'll only use momentum as a last resort. It's just not worth damaging the vehicle in my opinion. Now, I had a good solid crack of this little set of steps, but just had no luck and decided to move on to the next obstacle. Now, this was Hilto's first time wheeling with his new TC Boxes canopy. So he was keen to see what differences made with the car and just had to be careful about where the dimensions were in the box, the trees and whatnot. Now, as you can see, Hilto's got the same theory as me, just take things as easy as you can rather than using momentum to get up hills, just adjusting your line and trying different options is just the safest way. Now, one of the idiosyncrasies with the Toyotas is, is they won't run traction control when you've got your rear diff lock on or your factory rear locker. So in this case, the front wheels weren't doing anything because the left front had no traction. So Hilto switched the diff lock off and the front wheels will pull the truck over the hill. Now one of the biggest aces up your sleeve, especially when there's a lot of big rocks around, is uh, to do some track building. So you can adjust these, some of these rocks, build a bit of a ramp for the trucks to drive up. Again, just making it a bit easier in the truck and saving that, that need to use momentum to get over the hill. Now it's really handy to have a spotter in situations like this because there's just things you can't see from outside the car and just being able to see where wheels are lifting, what wheels got traction, what doesn't. So having that spotter just makes it a bit easier. Now I was pretty confident with the Jeep that it would have no dramas crawling up all of this. But I thought I'd give it a bit of a uh, crack at 
for the harder line that he'll tow tried as well. But as you'll see in a second, I had pretty much the same issue. And it was just a lack of clearance. Now I'm just running 33 inch tyres with a two inch lift. And if a Jeep has one weakness, it's its breakover angle, as it's got quite a long wheelbase. Now most people wouldn't realise it, but it actually has a longer wheelbase than your normal Land Cruiser, like a 200 series or an 80 series. And it just means you just gotta really make adjustments to your line, uh, just avoid um, belling out on some of these obstacles. As you can see though, low range first gear with the crawler gears, the Rubicon just makes it so controllable. With the twin lockers and the sway bar disconnect, it doesn't lift a wheel. It's so easy to drive and it's almost cheating. Now we continued exploring a park. We didn't find it was too overcrowded. You can take all different kinds of vehicles here, quads, motorbikes, side-by-sides, and obviously four-wheel drives. There's tracks to suit all different types of four-wheel drives, from touring rigs to big comp buggy trucks. Now one thing to remember is that it is a four-wheel drive park, and it's not really a camping destination. There are nice places to stop and camp, but its primary purpose is to practice your four-wheel driving. And it'll be a great destination to facilitate a four-wheel drive course or other four-wheel drive training. Now, one of the underrated dangers when four-wheel driving is sticks. It's so easy to drive over them for them to flick up, rip fuel lines out or break other parts of your car. And that's what happened to me. Probably because I was driving too close to Hilltoe and didn't see it. wheel in here and I've got a stick that's just jammed off the tail shaft here which is not good and it's just damaged that sleeve I have to fix that with some um, cable ties now I did a temporary fix in that sleeve just with some cable ties. It's really good to ca carry some cable ties around with you. Just for little things like that that can happen, you can fix up on the side of the track and do a proper job when you get back home. Now we spent a few more hours exploring the park uh, until we decided to head back to camp and spend the afternoon relaxing. Like I've, the last few times I've actually just done it at home.
look at me do a scary we can't do it. In the room. <laughs> Okay, so what did I finally think of the four-wheel drive park all up? Well, one thing to remember is that, as I said, it's a four-wheel drive park and its primary use is four-wheel driving or using other vehicles like motorbikes, quads and that sort of stuff. Now, it's got tracks to suit absolutely everything, quads, motorbikes, four-wheel drive, side-by-sides, and you'll find something that will suit you and your skills and your vehicle. Now, conditions are always gonna vary slightly They've had a lot of bad weather just before we arrived and the place did need some maintenance. In saying that, I'm fully aware of how much work goes into maintaining a park like this. And it is a lot of work, especially for just a few people. And if I was looking for a camping destination purely just for camping, it's probably not the best option. But absolutely, if you're going somewhere just to test your four driving skills without being too remote, and being close to help in a controlled environment, it's absolutely the perfect place to go. If that's what you're looking for, then I'd absolutely recommend you give them a call and stay for a weekend. You'll have an absolute ball and you'll also help to support local business. Now, if you've got any other further questions, anything you wanna know about the park or what we got up to, just chuck them in the comments down below. I'll leave a link to their website down in the description below. And if you could do me a favor, click that like button uh, that will really help support us and subscribe to the channel to help the channel grow and we'll catch you next time.